Hello friends. As the name of this video suggests, <laughs> everything leading up to this point has been chaos. And I'm sure everything after will be as well, so <sighs> we might as well just swing into the intro before I get myself in more trouble. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad that you are joining me here today. Um, it is me, your favorite chaotic mess. Um, maybe I need to change the name of this channel to Janine the Chaos Queen. That's how I'm feeling lately, <laughs> but it's fine. Um, I am filming this video post-run because I forgot I needed to film it. I'm sweaty. I haven't gotten the bath yet. Uh, my lighting is terribly set up and I am sweating buckets right now, but you're here because it is my chaotic, hopeful TBR for the next little while. So <laughs> let's not give chaos an opportunity, um, or more opportunities because I'm sure it will find lots of opportunities in this video because I'm here. So, um, basically I'm... This isn't like my September TBR or anything like that, and for those of you who don't know, a TBR is a to-be-read list. Um, I am pretty much a mood reader, aka, like the theme of this video, a chaotic reader. Um, I go a lot with my moods, uh, I like it depends on what my friends are reading or what has been recommended to me, and I like having lots of books on the go because if I, if the mood strikes me to feel like to read a certain thing, then I have options on the go. And sometimes I find that reading lots of books at once is helpful for <laughs> meeting reading goals because you're like semi through a bunch of books and depending on what you're doing um, or how you're reading them, sometimes you can get them done right away and it makes you feel super accomplished. I understand that that reading style is not for everybody. I am someone who also likes to binge read books like in as few sittings as possible. So. Maybe this is why I have an all or nothing personality style sometimes. Why are all of my videos making me realize that I probably should go and unpack more things in therapy? I say that jokingly, because I have already unpacked them. But self-reflection, friends, it's a big deal. <laughs> so um, like I said, this, actually I don't know if I said it, this deck does not have all of the books that I want to read in it because I have a few that are in progress on my phone as audiobooks. So one of them is, I think it's called Five Things About Ava Andrews by Margaret Dillaby or Dillaby or something like that. Um, I'll try and put the actual title and name of the author below here. Um, and then I'm reading We Were Dreamers by Samu Yu. Um, it, you guys, this is one of the only books I have listened to at actual set, like standard speed, one time speed, not faster, because Simu's voice is just very pleasing to the ear. Um, and it's some of the subject matter is very heavy, but also very relatable, although not from an immigrant or a person of color standpoint for me, obviously, because I am a white woman uh, born in Canada, um, and he moved to Canada with his family from China. Um, but, oh, an amazing book. So those two books are on my current list, want to get done. Um, really enjoying both of them so far. The Ava Andrews book has already made me cry about five times. Um, so there's that. I'm pretty sure it's a middle grade, but I'm really enjoying it so far. So how about we take a look at some of the physical books I'm hoping to finish up or start <laughs> in the next little while. The first is um, one you probably can't see because the glare. So I'll try and move closer. See, I told you chaos would find me. It is Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport. Um, Cal Newport is an author of some other books like Deep Work, and there's another one that's really popular. So good they can't ignore you. I didn't know what it was. I haven't read 
any of his books. This is the first book I've read. Um, for the most part, I'm really enjoying it. I'm pretty close to being finished. It is a library book, so I need to get it back sooner rather than later. Um, but I am interested in reading at least deep work by him. Um, because on this subject matter I, of digital minil minimalism, I think he's got a lot of great points, but I kind of also think he's a little bit full of it because he is, like, not in the digital landscape, really. So, yeah, like, he, you can still research stuff, but I find, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to, like, come to terms if I think he needs actual experience in social media, like the digital world, um, in order to write about it. So that's where I'm at right now. Next book I want to get to is, or I will be getting to, is The Second Chance Boutique. Um, boutique, however you want to pronounce it. Um, this book, this book is going to be a special featured video on its own, and I don't want to tell you too much about it before I get to it, but suffice to say, Haley, if you're watching this, this is the book. That's all. You'll, you'll know all of the secrets one day, YouTube. All right, uh, next book is, um, I also have started this one, it is 32nd Ancient Egypt. Um, I just finished like a Greek mythology kick um, and it was between, there were three of these same type of books and there was Ancient Egypt, um, Ancient Rome, and Ancient Greece. So I think I need to go to Rome eventually, like that'll be one of the next ones in like, that'll be the next ancient civilization I want to learn about, but so far this has been really good. Um, I'll probably read more Greek before I get back to Romans, but that's okay. Um, Stephen Fry, I have his second book after Mythos. He did a book called Heroes. I'm rambling. Yay, chaos. Anyway, this book, Ancient Egypt. Probably will have to watch The Mummy after, um, for any of you who don't know that I'm wildly obsessed with Brendan Fraser. Um, welcome to my channel. My name is Janine. Uh, I'm hoping to actually do a video about Brennan Fraser in the future, um, so stay tuned for that. Next book we have is The Plot. Um, this is a really interesting book that I actually got from a local bookstore called Daisy Chain Book Company, and uh, this was one of the owner's favorite books. And it's got a really interesting premise in that um, there's this, like, cocky student in this teacher's class who is convinced, like, in a writing class, uh, who's convinced he's got the best-selling no novel down pat, he just has to write it, um, and then I think he ends up dead, I'm not sure, I have, like, I'm literally this far in it, but I think he ends up dead, and then the professor takes the story idea and writes it, and then shit hits the fan when he does that, because I guess there were some skeletons in the dead boy's closet. Who knew? So this is a whodunit novel about a whodunit novel, I think, and I'm really interested to see how it gets there. Another nonfiction coming at you is Tiny Habits by BJ Fogg. Um, I'm not super far into this, but I have been trying a lot lately to work on self-development. Um, both personally and professionally. Um, so this has, was a great book that was recommended to me by a friend and I'm going slow through it, not because I find it hard to read, but rather because I really want to take in all of the information that is presented. Um, and so I'm, you know, learning a little bit as I go. The next book that I have is another book that I started, and this was a book that was given to me by a friend. It's called The Things We Cannot Say, um, but it was then recommended to me by a different friend, so I was like, okay, if there are two people who think I should read this book, I should read this book. Clearly, I started. Um, I do remember most of the book, so I don't think that I'll go back and, like, reread the beginning. I'll just keep going. I wasn't, like, super hooked in the beginning by this book, but I also was like, 
going through a lot at work at the time, preparing to move. There were a lot of things going on. So I don't want to knock the book just because I was too busy to read it and felt a little bit disengaged. So give it another try. Last but not least, I have a book that I have been meaning to read for literally forever. It was all over Bookstagram um, in the last like year or so, um, maybe a little bit longer than a year. And then someone at work said that they had read it and I think very highly of that individual and I was like, okay, if you say I need to read it, I am going to read it. And they reached out to me <laughs> not that long ago and she's like um have you read it yet I really want to talk to you about it and I was like <laughs> hmm, about that um have you met me I'm chaotic <laughs> so without further ado that book is a lot so um I am actually really excited for this book a lot of people that I know and love and admire really liked this book and like it is a book that is as pretty naked as it is with its dust jacket on. Um, I know that it's really great indigenous representation and I just there are so many good things about all of those aspects <laughs> and so I really don't remember anything about this story. I remember like reading about the premise prior to buying it but don't remember so I'm looking forward to being surprised all over again when I remember or don't uh, what this book is about so <sighs> apologies if you can hear the wild cutting in the background um, my partner is making food for tomorrow we're trying a new recipe um, well he's trying a new recipe I'm literally not doing anything I'm here sitting <laughs> and filming a YouTube video, but it's fine. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But like I said, it's been chaos. I knew I needed to film this video. I wanted to get it done and out into the world sooner rather than later. I feel like I should leave you with something insightful, but my inspiration well is a little bit dry. So instead, I'm going to... Um, reuse some of the things that I came across in social media in the last little while. Uh, two points in particular really um, stuck with me and I apologize that I don't have the people, the, like the original quote sayers I guess. Okay so the two things that I can remember to share because I had a different one but I forgot the, <laughs> the gist of it so I told you chaos would find me. I told you. Um, anywho, the first is that remember that it's okay when you're going through hell of any degree that you can just sit with it. You don't have to fix yourself. You don't owe anything to anyone. You can just be. Um... And I think people who are constantly pushing you to, like, find a lesson through the shit or, like, to be better and find the silver lining, um, watch those people and observe them because they may be well-meaning or you may find that those are some toxic people in your life. And if so, it can be hard to face that you need to determine how you want to move forward with that. Speaking from personal experience, it took me a few years to be able to finally understand this, but I had a person in my life who meant a lot to me, who I realized only in the last little while that they were that person, um, yet I was the villain. And so just don't be critical of everyone, don't be cynical. But, but beware, protect yourself, guard your heart a little bit if you're noticing that kind of rhetoric when you're not doing well. Um, because at the end of the day, like I said, it could be that they are well-intentioned or it could be that those people don't actually have your best interests in mind. And you, you deserve to be loved 
and you deserve to be supported and you don't need to feel like you're broken. Um, and especially like having other people impose on you how they think you should be healing through something, whether it's traumatic or not, but it brings to the surface so many negative feelings. No, you don't need that, okay? Just find yourself good people. They make all the difference, I promise you. Now, the other thing isn't necessarily about other people being good to you. It's about you being good to you. Um, more and more as I have been on this journey in the last year of like really finding myself and finding the power in myself as an individual and like loving and respecting myself um, is that the way we talk to ourselves it's so damaging and you would never talk to someone else or very rarely would you talk to someone else the way that you talk to yourself and so the quote that I came across was if being mean to yourself worked or being hard on yourself worked it would have worked by now and I think that statement is loud but it needs to be amplified times a million you know we can be so mean to ourselves and I once had to do an exercise in therapy where it was a it was a group session and I had to say all of the bad things that I normally say to myself to another individual so I was no longer saying them to myself but I was saying them to another flesh and blood human and if you are ever in a safe enough space and trust someone enough to do that exercise together where they say the negative thoughts they say to themselves out loud to you and you do the same you'll see just how powerful that exercise is. You are the only person who is with you 24-7, 365. Imagine how different your world could be if you loved the person that you spent all that time with. And you're lovable. You are you're important other people do care for you but what is most important is that you love and respect yourself ended up getting a lot deeper than I thought it was going to um, so I do apologize for that but I feel so no actually I don't apologize for that it came on without warning but honestly more people need to know that. Loving yourself is one of the most radical things that you can do in this world. When we've been taught that there's so much wrong with us and that we need to make ourselves better in some way and that we're never perfect but we have to always strive for perfection even though there are no occurrences of perfection in nature, naturally. That's what makes things so beautiful is their differences and their imperfections. They just are. So, you can just be too. I hope that whether you came for the motivational speech or the chaotic TBR, or maybe both, um, that you got something that you need out of this. Uh, I am always so happy and so grateful that you're here. Um, I haven't done this before in a video, but you know, if you liked this video, please, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if this resonates with you and 
if you want to hear more both about the chaos in my life and maybe a few motivational speeches here and there to let you know just how wonderful and worthwhile you are, um, consider subscribing. Um, this has very quickly become a passion project for me in which I'm hopefully just being another relatable human to others out there and this is a space where you can connect whether it be with me, whether it be with other people in the comments. Um, let's make this a space where we can unapologetically be our genuine selves and lift each other up or carry each other along when needed. Um, and so if that's something you want to be a part of, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Um, that felt really weird to say you guys, to ask you to subscribe, but hopefully, hopefully someone out there decides to. Um, regardless, I'm just happy you're on this journey with me. Um, like I said, it's very fulfilling and rewarding now, so I'm gonna go. I'm not gonna ramble anymore, but I hope to see you in the next video and that you take care of yourself until then. Okay? Bye.